Norg Squad. Norg Squad? Thank you for uh, 100 Norwegian kroner. I have an idea with this work in theory to have a parallel adapter and use a lithium ion and a lipo at the same time and have like a device that adapters that knows when to use the lipo for punching fast. So the problem is that the advantage of a lithium ion is that it can be discharged lower than a lipo. A lipo basically is useless below about 3.3 volts, maybe you know, depending on how fine you want to shave that, but 3.3 volts, let's say. A lithium ion can go down to, let's say, 2.8 volts. And that equates to longer flight time because you can just keep flying as the voltage gets lower. So if you had a lithium ion and a lipo in parallel, then the lithium ion would, would destroy the lipo because in parallel, the voltage is always the same. And that's the thing. Um, when to use the lipo for punching fast, the, uh, you wouldn't need like a switch of some kind. If a lipo and a lithium ion are in parallel and a load, you think about what a load is doing. When you connect a battery to a load, the battery has voltage potential and the load has a resistance, if you will. And the current that flows through the load is proportional to the voltage and the resistance, right? Volts divided by ohms equals amps. So if you have a motor and it is connected to two batteries in parallel, the exact same thing happens. The motor presents a load and therefore current like wants to flow. But the difference is that the LiPo having lower resistance, having a higher C rating or lower internal resistance will be more willing to provide current and will experience less voltage sag. Whereas the lithium ion will experience more voltage sag. And I have to wonder if like some current would flow into the lithium ion to keep its voltage up. I don't know. It's weird. I wonder, I, I think that wouldn't happen. Because like I've done tests on batteries in a parallel charge board. And when batteries have little different C rating or a little different cell size, they just give less current proportional to the, to the load. So it feels to me like if you took a LiPo and a lithium ion and put them in parallel, essentially you'd get what you're asking for. The LiPo would provide most of the current when current was demanded, but you would be missing out on the benefit of the lithium ion. There would be no point in doing that because the lithium ion could not go down to 2.8 volts without destroying the LiPo. What you would need is some kind of a circuit that cut off the LiPo at 3.3 volts and then only left you with the lithium ion as kind of like a backup gas in the tank. But then you're losing the weight worth of flight time, right? Yeah, I don't think it's worth it. It's like there's a reason that nobody does this. It it feels really clever, but once you start diving into it, the downsides outweigh the advantages. Is what I what I think. If you yeah. I mean, why wouldn't you just use lipos then if you want? High, high discharge. Like this is the, the circuit you would you would want to use. I agree, and I'm certainly not a, a, a schematics expert or electrical circuitry expert. Like, but if you had diodes like this, then current could not flow between the batteries. It could only flow to the load. But in that case, you would just destroy the lithium ion. Because if you've got this high powered motor, that's what happens. What happens if you take a lithium ion battery and you put like a high KV, high powered motor on it? It sags like crap. It gets super hot. It gets super puffy and it's ruined. That same thing would happen if you had a lipo in parallel with it. I mean, the lipo would take some of the load, but yeah. I don't, I don't know. It feels clever, but I think it has, I don't think it would work. And there's a reason nobody does it.
Uh, Fletcher H, thank you for a five dollar super chat. Building a beater quad. Should I go for more expensive durable motors or cheaper weaker motors? A thousand percent cheaper weaker motors. A thousand percent. The 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 more expensive motors are not that much dur more durable than the cheaper ones. I, I have a saying. It's kind of analogous to Mike. Ty you know Mike Tyson saying. I don't know if he actually said this. It's attributed to him. Uh, everybody has a plan until they get punched in the face. Right? I like that. It's a cute saying. Um, my analog to that saying is that everything breaks when you slam it into the ground at 70 miles an hour. So, yes, some things are more durable than other things, but everything will break eventually. And a motor that costs 40% more, it's not going to be 40% more durable, probably, when you're smashing it into the ground at 70 miles an hour. Okay. Um, so especially because if you said I'm building a racing drone and I want to win all the races, I want the best racing drone, the fastest racing drone you can get. I'd be like, okay, buy premium motors. You know, they're going to give you just that little bit more performance maybe than a cheaper motor. I mean, sometimes they don't just, you have to look at the testing. Um, but, um, I would rather spend half as much on a motor and replace it 25% more often. And you see, you still come out ahead than spend twice as much on a motor and replace it 25% less often. Yeah. Um, I think the sweet spot for motor pricing right now is about 15 to $20. Three years ago, it was... 12 to 16 dollars but motors have the motors that three years ago used to cost 15 14 dollars and be pretty solid budget motors now they cost 18 19 maybe 20 dollars and that's just it's just life off axis thank you for five canadian dollars why does using crossfire near my computer make it freeze or reboot how far can i go on 25 milliwatt crossfire um so your computer shouldn't freeze or reboot but the reason it's doing it is that the crossfire video transmitter or the crossfire module outputs a shitload of energy at 900 megahertz and that frequency is low enough that it's creating electrical feedback rf feedback in your computer that's effing up your computer and making it not work a way that you can solve that is you can put your crossfire transmit power on a switch some people choose their arm switch some people choose like just an unused two position switch you can do it however you like in the crossfire lewis script you can configure the power on a switch I actually have a video about how to do it, but I'm not gonna go look it up right this minute. And then you can flip that switch and make it stay at low power when you're on the bench and then it probably won't wreck your computer. How far can I go on 25 milliwatt crossfire? Um, pretty far if there's no obstacles. If there are obstacles, not as far, but I'm not gonna give you a number. Realistically, I probably would want more than 25 milliwatts for casual flying unless I was just flying. Like for racing, you could be at 25 milliwatts. You have no obstacles and you're you know less than 500 meters away. Probably significantly less than 500 meters. 